Today I'm going to be talking about a bit of a controversial topic which is can you copy a photo for your artwork? In the background you'll be able to see how I created this fox using watercolours and archival pens. My name's Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. So there are two parts to this question that I want to touch on and the first part is, is it cheating? In my opinion, I don't believe it's cheating and this is why. The old masters actually used to use camera obscurers and anything that they can as a tool to make painting easier. If your painting's taking a hundred hours like some of the famous artists do today, then you can't expect your subject to sit still for that long. So a lot of artists take photos for them to use back in the studio to finish their artwork. And as an artist, you can make the original reference photo look better by hyping up the contrast in your artwork or changing the colours or removing unwanted spots and shadows or changing the background. So it doesn't have to be exactly like the photo and you don't usually copy it exactly. There's something about it that you'll change. Also, if you wanted to paint wildlife and you don't have access to a zoo or anything like that nearby or it's a small zoo that doesn't have a lot of animals, then you can't expect to be able to fly across the other side of the world to take a safari so that you can sit there and paint a lion while it's laying there. It's just a really expensive and kind of impractical way of doing things, especially when you have the internet at your fingertips. Copying a reference photo really doesn't make you any less of an artist. If I gave a reference photo to someone who hasn't practiced art before and the same photo to someone who has 40 years experience, guess which one is going to make the best art? Just because you have a reference photo doesn't mean that your art is going to be any better. You still have to learn how to paint and draw and use your skills to render it and change it accordingly to how you want your artwork to look. There are a lot of people that seem to think that they have to be able to draw everything from their head and that's fine if you're not working in realism or you're you're working on the same subject that you have been doing for the last 10 years. I mean if you've painted a hundred flamingos your hundred and first flamingo is probably going to be fine if you did it from your head whereas if you're painting a variety of subjects you want to have a reference photo to be able to refer to so that you can make sure that every muscle and every bone is in the right spot and the, the light is reflecting off the fur exactly how it's supposed to so that it can look as realistic as possible. If you aren't working in realism or photorealism, like if, you're, if your work is very stylized or cartoony, then sure, draw from your head and it will probably look like the animal that it's supposed to look like. But the style that I am aiming for and a lot of other people are aiming for is realism or photorealism. So having a reference photo to work from to make sure that every little thing is as realistic as it possibly can be is pretty much essential. The second part to this topic is the copyright issues that may come along with using photos from the internet. Now I'm not a lawyer by any means so you'll need to do your own research but this is what I understand is correct and how I go about using photos for reference for my artwork. When an artist creates a piece of work or a photographer takes a photo, it's automatically copyrighted to that photographer or artist. You don't need to do anything to have it be copyrighted to you, it's automatically yours. This also means that you can't legally use a photo that you took from Google as your reference photo and copy it exactly without permission from the photographer. This photographer has used their skills, expensive camera equipment and editing software and the experience and time to produce this photo. There are a lot of people out there that think that if you change your photo by 10% or 20% or whatever number you want, then it's okay to use because you've changed it enough so that it belongs to you now and that you can use it in your artwork. But that's not the case at all. I mean, who would determine whether something is 10% changed or 50% changed? If you put your artwork next to that photo and you can recognize that it has been copied from that photo, and then you violated the copyright if you don't have permission to use that photo to start with. What if someone copied your artwork exactly, or a musician copied another song exactly? It's the same thing, it doesn't matter if you change the background or something about it. If you can tell that you've used that reference and your subject looks exactly the same as the reference, then there's a chance that the original creator of the work can take legal action. There are a few little exceptions to this, like if you have your own photo of a tiger that you're drawing but there's a certain section that is a little bit blurry and you want to be able to see what that looks like, you can google what a tiger looks like and see which direction the fur goes in or how far up the white goes on its face, then you can do that as long as you don't copy the exact position and the the facial expression and everything about that photo that you, you saw on google, you can use it as reference to see how things look or how they're supposed to look but you can't copy that photo. Another common misconception is that because the photographers uploaded it onto the internet it means that you have the right to use it. 
It doesn't matter if there's a copyright logo on it or not, it's automatically owned by the photographer. Just like if you uploaded your own artwork to Facebook or your website, people can't take that image and claim it as their own. If you really do like a photo that you found on Google, see if you can find who the photographer was and contact them because a lot of photographers let you use their artwork as long as you credit them as the photographer when you upload your work to the internet or tell people about your work. I tend to avoid any legal issues around copyright by using royalty-free websites where you're allowed to use any of the images without issues for your artwork at all. There are a few free websites that have thousands of photos that I use quite often and one of them is Pixabay, one of them is Unsplash and the third one is Pexels and I'll leave a link in the description to all of those but you can pretty much use any photo on those websites for anything that you like and you won't get in trouble with copyright laws because you have permission to use those. I also use a couple of paid websites like wildlifereferencephotos.com and um, Jason Morgan has quite a few photos that you can purchase. They have some really amazing photos that you can download for a very inexpensive price and I highly recommend those too as well. If you use your own photos then you're not going to have an issue with any other artists creating artwork that looks similar to yours because you own the rights to that original photo and no one can copy that photo or your artwork because it belongs to you. Whereas if you use a royalty free photo whether you've paid for it or not there may be a hundred other artists using the exact same reference photo and that's totally fine but your artwork may end up looking very similar to another artist's work and that doesn't mean that either of you copied each other it just means that you both use the same royalty free photo as reference and there's nothing you can do about it looking the same because both of you have rights to use the reference as well as your own artwork it's only a legal issue if someone copies your artwork directly instead of a reference photo Sometimes I like to copy the royalty free photos exactly, which is fine, but if you want to avoid having your artwork look like other people's, like I try and change something about it so that the reference photo looks a little bit different, like I'll change the background or the colours or I'll hype up the contrast just to make it a bit more unique. Another thing to add to using photos from Google, if you're sketching at home by yourself and you don't plan on posting your work online and definitely not going to sell it and then you can do whatever you want but be careful if you're going to post it online. On the screen there's a playlist with a few other videos that I thought you might enjoy so just click on that and I'll see you over there.